Hey everyone, and welcome to the Yarn Journey Crochet Podcast. My name is Holly. I live in North Carolina with my family. This is a podcast about crocheting, knitting, cross-stitching, crafting in general. Um, so yeah, we have a had a very busy week here, and um, yeah. <laughs> I'm a little out of practice again. So everything you need to know will be linked down below. So where you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry, and um, Etsy. So those will all be linked down below. We do still have a quetter, a, a quetter, a sweater cowl going on, which is knit and crochet. Um, I actually just pulled winners for this last quarter and it is going until March 2019. So if you're making sweaters and you would like a prize of a free pattern, be sure to enter it. It's in the Ravelry group, which is the Yarn Journey Crochet podcast group. So yeah, be sure to check there and put your entries in because it's been a very slow cow for sure, probably because I was gone for like three months, four months, whatever. So yeah. Yes. Um, my hair is a little doing its own thing today, but I kind of liked it. So I put a little mousse in it and just let it go free. So anyway, <laughs> um, I missed last week because we had a hurricane, um, and it was a pretty bad one, but we left and came back home to surprisingly an undamaged house. So that was a blessing, <laughs> to be honest, um, because it seemed like everyone had some type of issue with something and we just didn't. So super happy. Um, we also finally closed on our old house. It's done, it's settled. No more stress with that. And I am so, 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 so relieved because I was so over it. <laughs> um, so yeah. So, I mean, I could probably go more into that later in chatter, but let's get started. I didn't get as much done as I would have hoped for, but I did start a couple new projects and I actually have an FO. So my first FO, it is a knitting one. Um, cause you know, it's so weird. I just find it a lot easier to knit in the car than crochet for some reason. I don't know why. Probably because when I crochet, I tend to do bigger projects and knitting always tends to be small projects like a hat or socks. So my first FO is this little guy and it is just a little beanie. It even fits, maybe not. Um, I was actually making this for Emma. And I was using Tin Can Knit Rye, which I believe is their hat pattern for Stitch Count. Um, it's free. It's on Ravelry. Um, I still have to sew in ends. Like, that one is just, like, peeking out. I am terrible at sewing in ends at knitting, apparently, because, <laughs> because this was sewn in and now it's not. And I have all... <laughs> of this to sew in still but to me this is still finished I don't care if there's ends it's a hat so technically you could just still wear it no one's gonna see the loose ends <laughs> um so this was supposed to be for Emma but it ended up being too small because obviously my gauge is way tighter so this is actually Collins now um I don't know if he'll actually wear it because he is not a hat person um so I basically just used their stitch count and just did a two by two rib and then knitted the rest of the way up and decreased. But I didn't really follow the entire pattern because it has like that strip of like um, purling and I just didn't want to do that. I just wanted a basic beanie that I didn't have to think about while we were driving to um, Missouri when we were evacuating. So I just did this one. So that's my FO, even though I still have to sew in the ends. Can you hear my, my child? Um, and then I have a hoe, which unfortunately does not fit. 
Um, I fit also no ends weaved in yet. Um, I finished my sock and I was so excited, so happy. And then I put it on and it was about an inch and a half too short in the foot. So my heel was like in the leg. It was like right here. And I was like, no, no. Um, so yeah, I made a sock and I can't even wear it. I think there's this thing that I have where it's like one sock throwaway syndrome because it seems like the first time I make a sock for somebody, the first one never fits, but then the second one fits perfectly. So yeah, I made this one. I was using Knit Picks um, Felici in Hibiscus and I, I, lo I have to say I love it. Um, this yarn has been sitting in a bag, so it kind of got extra fuzzy. So, yeah. And I just did a, um, toe-up sock. This is using, um, ooh, I itchy guy. Um, Nathan Taylor's Sockmaticians toe-up sock recipe. Um, so it's casted on in the toe using Judy's Magic Cast On, and then... I used an afterthought heel, which this one also turned out pretty uh, jacked up because I suck at Kitchener stitch. <laughs> um, so I used an afterthought heel and then just one by one rib in the, the cuff with, um, oh man, what is it called? It's from Very Pink Knit. She has this bind off that's like supposed to be super stretchy. Which it is, but I also don't like how it flares at the top. Like, it looks like you've already worn the sock and it's, like, completely worn out. So I might do a different cast-off method next time because I don't really like that. Even though I want it to be super stretchy, I also... Excuse me? I also don't want it to look like that. So, um, yeah. So I'm going to have to do my sock again. But before I jump back into this one, I will... Probably, you know, I, I might just do a different sock instead of these, this color. Even though I love this one, it's just I'm so tired of knitting it. I might do something else. So, yeah. Um, and that's it. Because, like, I was right here when you guys last saw it, and I didn't have the heel in. And that's how much progress I made. So, first sock throwaway syndrome. Because it seems like the first sock I make for everybody <laughs> gets tossed because it doesn't fit. So, yes, on to whips. Okay, so I'll start with the ones you've already seen and then work into the ones you haven't seen yet. So, this is the baby blanket. And I'm sorry, the lighting is going to be totally freaking funky, but I've noticed that when I use just natural lighting in this room it doesn't show the colors the way I want it to so if like if I show that that's pretty dang accurate I mean even that one is a little more that actually is a little more accurate but when I've noticed when it's dark over here it tends to wash out the colors more so I have like this little side lamp and luckily it's like an LED bulb so it doesn't get hot so I don't have to like sweat but um so last time you guys saw this, this is the um, Baby Ripple Blanket by Daisy Cottage Designs. Um, I was here and I made this much progress in the last two weeks. I've just, I haven't gotten a chance to work on this because like I said, we were gone for almost a week and a half, a little over a week and a half because of the hurricane and obviously I can't take all my projects with me I did take this one hoping to get some downtime to do it but we just didn't really ever have downtime to just sit you know and I had to watch my kids extra careful because of my mother-in-law's house she has a lot of um decorations that like to sit out and a lot of them are breakable <laughs> so I had to worry about the kids running through that and breaking them you know or they have a basement so I didn't want them falling down the stairs so that was something I was worried about so I didn't really get much downtime 
So that is all the um, progress I made. Wait, why did it say video while charging something, something? I don't know. Okay, so this is Grey Mist by I Love This Yarn. This is, what is it, ivory or white? Ivory, also from I Love This Yarn. And then this one is Rosy Cheeks by I Love This Yarn. Um, oh gosh, I don't even remember what size hook I'm using. Is it this one? A 5.5 millimeter hook. So that is the progress I made on this one. Not very much. It isn't something to write. Something, it's nothing to write home about, sorry. My kid is going, Emma is like crying downstairs and Nick is getting irritated, so yeah. You probably can hear it. I'm almost positive you can hear it. Um, next up, let's see, what should I show next? Oh, my new projects. I said I'm showing new projects first. So the next thing I was working on, and I'll tell you why I started this one. So I was working on the Amelia Raglan and I was using an alpaca blend and I noticed that my tongue and my nose would tingle and get numb when I would work with it and I would get really itchy. I mean, I could wear jeans and it would sit on my lap and I could feel it itching me through my pants. So I um, decided I wasn't gonna finish it I know it was a waste of time I did all that work only to sit here and say I'm not finishing it because it itches <laughs> so I started the reminisce sweater by the velvet acorn who is Heidi May the designer is Heidi May and I have seen this cardigan not sweater cardigan um, and I've had it saved on Ravelry for like two years now or something like that and I've always I've been wanting to do it and I've been wanting to make a garment for myself for so long and I got so close <laughs> um with the Amelia, Ra Amelia Raglan which I will still use that pattern because it was super simple and easy to come up and do but it just isn't happening right now I have to I have to find some yarn for it which I think I might have some, but we'll see. So I started that. So as you can see, kind of why on earth I picked white? I have no idea. So as you can see, it's going to kind of go like that. Why I pick white? I may quickly increase the phones. I don't know. Um, I don't know why I picked white. But <laughs> I bought this yarn knowing that I was going to do the reminisce sweater, even though it's a cardigan, in this. So <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. But the yarn I'm using is the Loops and Threads Joy DK. Um, and this is the color. It's probably just snow, which is white. I mean, I, like I said, I don't everything white I have ever owned has been destroyed so I don't know why I picked a white yarn to make a cardigan I don't know but somewhere in my insane mind was like I want a white cardigan we're gonna make a white cardigan so yeah I started this um I started this and we will see how it goes and I'm also using the stitch marker right here that I got from Randy from her shop her Etsy shop and they're so freaking cute and I actually just ordered a bag from her because she had this fabric that I saw and I was like oh my gosh I have to get it but the only Joann's we have is over an hour away so when I was in Missouri I went and looked at fabric at their Joann's because it was five minutes from my in-laws house so I went there and they didn't have any and they were like we get one bolt of the special ones and that's it and I was like are you stinking kidding me so I didn't get it which bummed me out because I wanted to make a bag but 
Randy got it and she made a bag, so I'm buying it from Randy. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is my sweater that I am starting and hopefully I'll have it by the time it gets cool because it's still pretty stinking hot. Like today feels like the first day that it actually feels like it could be fall. It's like in the 70s. It's still warm, but it's cool enough to actually go outside and do stuff, which is amazing. Like I could actually walk outside and not drip sweat from the humidity and the heat because oy. so yeah, I'm actually going to do this with white. And then I'm thinking once I get further on, I kind of want it to look like one of those old school, um, Oh my gosh, like the old school Letterman jackets from like the 50s where they have like a stripe here and then like stripes at the bottom. I think that's what I'm thinking of. I don't know. But I wanted to kind of look athletic looking and I picked purple as obviously purple, right? Um, I picked the purple one, which is destroyed. So I'm gonna have to cake this one up. And this one is in the color Iris. So I'm doing a white and purple cardigan. So yeah, that is what I have started. Um, I'm trying to think, and then there's actually a couple more things. On. Yeah, that's the only old thing. Okay. Um, so the next thing I'm working on is a knitting one, and I am remaking the um, hat for Emma. I actually had to go up to an adult size hat because the other one it did fit her but you could tell that the ribbing was just it fit but it didn't fit the way you would want it to like you could tell it was pulling tighter than it should so I did I went up to an adult small size stitch count and I'm doing hers a little different so they don't get them mixed up so the one is the color that I'm using oh my gosh I didn't even talk about the yarn in the FO um, which is the same yarn from here. It is the Karen and Pantone, and I think it's called Frosted Berries or Snow Berries or Frozen Berries. Um, so I've been putting the white in between the main colors here. So I've been putting the white in between like the main color chunks to make it look like snow on the berries. Um, so yeah, I've been working on that. I'm using five millimeter, five millimeter needles, knitting needles. Um, basic, same thing, just different stitch count. I can't remember what the stitch count is actually. <laughs> it was just one of those things that it was like super easy to work on in the car, even though it turned out it didn't because I kept dropping all the little tiny balls <laughs> from the Karen and Pantone set. But yeah, this is what I was working on on our way home because I was just, and I, I couldn't even work in the car that often because I was so stinking tired from being on the road. It And the thing is, is like when we were driving, because there were road closures, we couldn't necessarily take the fastest route home. So that meant we were like, on the way there, we literally drove 12 hour days and it was exhausting. And yeah like we didn't the first night of driving to Missouri we didn't get to our hotel until 1 30 in the morning it was exhausting exhausting so that is that one and then I have one more um I'm trying to find the um I should have this already but you know we're winging it mm-hmm Okay, anyways, um, I got an order from someone before we actually left and it took a little while to get the yarn and I got it, I would say like a few days before we actually left. So I got the yarn and then we ended up leaving. So it took me a while and she wanted a basket to hold toilet paper in her bathroom. And she saw those videos that you see on like Instagram and YouTube and Facebook and stuff like that where they show someone doing the a lot of the times it's with the t-shirt yarn so uh, I'll get into that I'm getting ahead of myself so she saw that and she wanted one so I ended up ordering the yarn which by the way t-shirt yarn is ridiculously expensive because 
it is almost impossible to find it in the States. Like the nice, thick, chunky t-shirt yarn. Like the real t-shirt yarn. And it's ridiculously expensive to have it shipped. It's even more expensive than the yarn itself. Like, oh my god. So I ended up finding something very similar, which was the um, Bernat Maker Home Decor. It's very similar. It wasn't as chunky as it should have been, so I'm kind of like tripling up the thread, or the, the thread, the yarn. Um, and this is the Colorway Aqua. I don't know what the gray one is called. I've been looking for the tag, but I think I might have tossed it unknowingly. I swore I had it in here, but now I'm not seeing it. So, yes. Um, aqua and then gray. And I'm actually about... I'm over halfway done with this. I should be done in a couple more rows. But it's like... Hold on. It's like this. So it's going to sit... It's hard to hold it because it's, you know, yarn. Um, like that. It's a long rectangular basket that's going to sit on the floor, hold her toilet paper. Um, I'm actually tripling. I learned this trick through, um, oh my gosh, it was like an Instagram type video that I found on Facebook. And what you do is, so as you can see, there's a loop and then you have your normal working yarn. So when you need to make the loop longer, you open it up, take your working yarn, pull it through, and then you have three strands and it's thicker. So that's what I've been doing with this whole basket, which has been taking me forever to finish. Um, I mean, I only started it like three days ago, but I expected it to be quicker because of how thick the yarn was. But because of how I have to do the yarn to make it the thickness that she saw on that video it's taking a while um this i'm not using a pattern i just made a rectangle or rect an oval and just kind of started working its way up the side but i will tell you i will never make another one of these again in my life i do not make like making them um but i am using an eight millimeter hook and yes, I have come to realize I don't like working with bulky yarn that much. <laughs> and now I understand why knitters are constantly using fingering weight. Although it takes forever to get your things done, it's not as hard on the wrists and your fingers. Because when I'm working on this, my hands cramp up. It's, it's a lot. But she paid for it, so I'm doing it. <laughs> um... So yeah, that is what I am working on. And I think that is it for whips. I'm trying to think. Yes, that's it. Okay, so I didn't even know I was in a giveaway, but I won a giveaway. Um, Stephanie from the Tatted Tatter actually did a giveaway for her subscribers. And she did... Um, I think she said she did it by all the comments that were left on her videos and at all her podcasts and stuff. And my name was pulled. So thank you so much, Stephanie. I honestly love what you gave me. It is so adorable. So first off, I got this bag. It is so stinking cute. It has this little, I have these same little charms says made with love you probably can't see it um I am not I can't recall who made the bag I would have to look it up again um I'll probably link it down below so if you like the bag you can go purchase one maybe if they sell bags I'm not sure and then she gave me a Crochet Luna pen, which says happiness is crochet, which I stinking think is so cute. This is actually like my favorite pen that she has out and I love it, which also came with a 
chai green tea and then it came with a um unicorn like pencil holder which is like a notions pouch but as soon as my daughter saw it she hijacked it of course you know unicorns <laughs> and rainbows like that's her thing unicorns and rainbows are her thing so she like hijacked that for me and then the piece of resistance the material culture fiber arts yarn that I got and it is stinking beautiful like I cannot wait to use this and this is in the colorway Del Coronado so I'm assuming it's named after the hotel in uh, Coronado Bay which is in San Diego um, it's a 75% superwash merino 15% nylon 10% tinsel which I'm not I'm or tinsel I'm not entirely sure what that is. I would have to look it up. I mean, it's, I, when I first heard her say that, I initially thought like some type of sparkly stuff, but it's not. So I don't know what that is, but the yarn feels amazing. So I'm not complaining. Um, so yeah, and they have a website, which is material culture fiber at etsy.com. So If you like this, go see if they have some. It's so pretty. There we go. I have to like try and duck down and see if it's like coming out clear or not. Um, so yeah, I received this um, shortly before the hurricane hit. So I didn't get a chance to show you guys. Um, but I love it. It is amazing. And I cannot wait to use it. So thank you again, Stephanie. I really love it. It is adorable. Um, oh, that is what I forgot to show you guys. Where is it? Uh, here we are. I forgot a project, which I was testing um, Stephanie's Killmonger cowl, which I have not made much progress on. But, yeah. Oh, this is the new bag that I got from Joann's. How freaking cute is that? Like, holy crap. I about died when I saw it. So, Stephanie asked, or I, I text, wrote her and said, hey, if you're looking for any more testers for your cowl, I would love to test it. So, she agreed and gave me the pattern and I started working on it. And then the hurricane hit and I couldn't take everything. So I totally missed the deadline, but I did read through her pattern and I got through at least this part. I didn't get to the obviously like the stitching it together, but I made it through. So I pretty much saw what was in the pattern and I told her what I found. But yes, this is the Killmonger Cowl by Stephanie of the Tatted Tatter. Um, and obviously <laughs> I didn't get far. Um, so the... This color right here is actually a Cascade Yarns. It's 220 Superwash Sport Multi um, in the color 108. They don't have names on here, um, at least on that label. So, yeah, I was working on this. And then the red is the... Um, oh, my God, I'm totally blanking. Wool Like Red. Um, I doubled it up to make the same thickness as the, um, the Cascade. So I am really looking forward to finishing this because I do want a cowl. I just haven't had a chance to work on it. And I told her I would get it done and take pictures so she could put it on her, um, if she wants, she could put it on her, um, Etsy listing not Etsy um Ravelry page for it um and I'm pretty sure it comes out tomorrow or this it was October 1st or 2nd I can't remember and I think she's also doing a cow for it so maybe I'll join the cow <laughs> because I'm not even 50 way 50 percent done yet um so yeah if you like this, I don't have the freaking picture with me, but it's like a really large cowl and this repeats and then this repeats. 
and apparently I have really tight crocheting and I'm hoping that when I block this it blocks out a lot bigger because in her picture that's like super long and I'm like oh my god I don't think mine's gonna work so yeah that is the other project I was working on that I completely forgot because I put it in this bag because it was just sitting up here and my kids kept grabbing at it so good thing I talked about the thing she sent me or I would have completely forgot so that is it for whips um yeah so I will go through what I bought which wasn't a lot um like hardly anything so when I actually bought I'll start with the yarn first I bought these um three weeks ago three four weeks ago it took a while um to get them one because the hurricane hit like literally two days after she sent this so it got stuck at the post office um and then I had to wait for the roads to clear for the mail to get here and then I finally got it and then I also had some lion brain yarn waiting so we'll start with the exciting ones first so I ordered some Halloween yarn from Bad Wolf Girl Studios because honestly I love her stuff and this one is called this is Halloween and it's a lovely speckle it is gorgeous it has basically like all the colors of Halloween in it and I am just in love now this next one is called pumpkin king when i saw this one i was a little disappointed but i know that hand dyed yarn is nothing is going to be exactly the same as what's pictured but i expected a little more color this one looks so similar to this one um this one is the pumpkin king and on the photo it looked like it was a pretty saturated skein like it was all colored um, with hardly any white in there um, but I still like it it's different you could tell that this is more speckled and there is more color um, but it was just one of those things where I'm like oh I saw the picture and the picture looked like it was completely saturated with color but when I got it it wasn't so you know but that's the thing with hand dyed nothing is going to dye up exactly the same and that's something that we kind of have to remember which is why I was like you know what whatever it's no big deal I'm still gonna use it I'm still gonna love it which I'm thinking socks with these I typically don't make socks out of expensive yarn typically I will make my socks out of like the knit picks yarn but I really want some Halloween socks really bad um so I'm thinking I think I might do this one because it's a higher twist where this one isn't it's still twisted like it's not but it's like squishier and I feel like it won't hold up as well as this one so this is the pumpkin king and this is this is Halloween oh my god I love them I love them so much okay and then the next yarn came in this lovely box it has lion brand on it <laughs> so I got 15 skeins of yarn from lion brand because they were doing a um, dollar sale I need to hurry up because I don't want my camera to cut off <laughs> and I got five of these this is called honey and this is kind of coming out okay see that is more true to color right there I thought it was gonna be more like a honey brown and not more gold I mean honey is golden I know that but I was expecting it to be more like the oatmeal and honey color so it was like a light brown <laughs> but I got five of these and then I got five of these which is the orchid colorway. And then I got 
the dark purple, which is plum. So, as you can see, I got five of each, so I spent, I think it was like $23 on all of this with shipping and tax. So, I might do something with this. I might just do this and put a green in or something. Oof. So, yeah, I got quite a bit, but I didn't pay a lot. So, when you find those dollar sales on these websites, that is the perfect time to stock up. Because normally, I think these are like $5.99 or $6.99 a ball because they're the wool spun. So, yeah, I was like, a dollar? Okay, we're about to make mom some some yarn. We're we're getting some yarn. <laughs> And even my husband was like, wow, 15 balls for $23. That's not, bad. That's not bad. So, yeah. So that was pretty much it for yarn. That's all I bought. But um, I did get a couple books, or a magazine and a book. Um, the Interweave Crochet came out, and I saw it, and I was like, yes, I love Interweave. I feel like their designs are amazing which I'm going to show you the design page on the back where it shows what's all in here. And I love that in each issue they do like apparel and accessories. And then they also do home decor, which I absolutely love. So let's see. Okay, there we go. So they have a lot of different... Um, they have quite a, a couple cardigans in here that look super cute. And obviously, they have a freaking unicorn. So I saw that. At first, I was like, oh, interweave. And then I saw the unicorn on the front right here. And I was like, I have to get it. I have to. Because Emma is in a unicorn phase. And I was like, you know what? They have a pattern already for it. So I'm just going to get one. So... I'm probably going to make her a unicorn sometime in the future. I don't know when, but now I have the pattern. I don't have to worry about rushing to get it. Um, so, yeah. I am super looking forward to this. I'm trying to find the one that I... Sorry, my contacts are, like, dry. I'm trying to find the one cardigan. I was like, yes, yes, this one right here. Yes all those cables they and it looks so cozy it's like oversized oh my goodness it looks so cozy like here's the other picture of the back so the back is like all cables it looks amazing i'm trying to see and i believe that's from shannon mullet bowlsby which is the person I started doing my other cardigan with, which I have not made any progress on. It's been sitting. Um, and I think it's also the Sheba guys on Instagram. Oh my God. Their technique for cables is amazing. They look gorgeous. So stinking beautiful. Oh, here's the other one, the other cardigan. It's super simple, but it looks so stinking cozy. So cozy. And then the next one I got, because apparently I just want to knit, um, even though I'm, oh my gosh, something is in my eye. Apparently I am not a very advanced knitter, but I, in my mind, think, who cares? We're going to buy books that we can't even do because they look pretty. <laughs> So this is called Refine Knits. Um, it is an interweave uh, publication, and it's from Jennifer Wood, which is Lace Cables and Erin Lace Knitwear. And they're gorgeous. There is this one, oh my goodness, that I found that I was like, oh, holy cow. Here's one of them. Like, how beautiful is that? Because, you know, I love cables. Um, and then there's this top that is super gorgeous, but like, seriously, can we be real? When am I going to knit these? I don't know because I, um, you know, I'm a very beginner knitter. I can't even do a freaking Kitchener stitch, right? Let alone go and freaking knit 
a garment like I don't know what I was thinking but I was like "Ooh, those are pretty maybe one day <laughs> so I bought it and called it a day last but not least or not last but not least uh, there's ooh, two more things I did buy some fabric which one of these I saw on Randy's channel which was this one it was like the Ouija board um fabric which is like super spooky and Halloween-y with skeletons and crows and moths and I loved it because I have a spooky side and I love spooky stuff so I bought that one and then I also got this one which I loved I fell in love with it it's here let me open this up a little bit so it's like spooky trees with bats and the moon I don't know what I'm gonna use this for <laughs> but I saw it and I was like oh, I want it I want it so and plus I went for that one fabric it was the which one that had like skeletons and cauldrons and witch hats and stuff but they didn't have it now last but not least I bought this cross stitch which I have not been able to find the second page to my cross stitch that I was working on a while ago so yeah I need to find that page or I'm probably gonna start something else so this is the one I bought it's from design works um, I'm trying to look for the name on this beauty of your dreams so I thought this was really nice I like the dream catchers on there I always grew up with a dream catcher in the house so yeah that is it for the podcast oh my gosh this is 41 minutes I did not expect it to go this long um so yeah that is it and as like at this point it's chatter so we sold our house thank god because it was I was losing it like it seemed like the week of the hurricane with it hitting so we left went to my in-laws house right and like we're worried about not coming home to a house you know or coming home to a house that is ruined from floodwaters you know so we were like super worried about that and then we were worried about the house selling and then we owed money to sell our house we had to come up with money to sell our house I about lost it and I did I went off on my realtor and you know 